What's up guys, Alex here, welcome back to another video and if you recently picked up the brand new Google Pixel 7a phone then this video is for you because we're gonna go over all the things that you need to do on your brand new phone first. Now there's a lot to cover so let's get right into it and the very first thing you should always do when you get a new phone is pick up a case. You want to get some protection on your phone because the last thing you want is to drop it or scratch it or have it break just as you got it. So definitely get some protection on here. Now, if you know me, you know that I love these Spigen cases. I've been using them for years. I recently just ordered one for this phone as well. I'll leave it linked in the description below. I'm not sponsored by them. I just really, really love the product and I've been using Spigen cases for a really, really long time. So if you want one, go ahead and check it out in the description below. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is speed up our phone. So if we go into our phone settings, then scroll down to accessibility, go to color and motion. You'll see an option in here to remove animations. And this is going to make your phone a little bit quicker because instead of seeing animations, you can see when you enter or exit applications, there's an animation where the application pops up on your screen. But you can actually remove these animations and you can see that everything just opens and closes immediately without those animations. Now, personally, I actually like the animations, but I do think that by default, they are a little bit too slow. So instead of removing them entirely, you can actually speed them up. So to do that, what you wanna do is go back into your settings, scroll all the way down to about phone, go to your build number at the bottom and tap on this seven times and it will ask you for your pin to enable developer options. Now what you can do is go back to your settings again, tap on system, and then at the bottom, you'll see this developer options mode. In here, you can tap on this magnifying glass to search, and you wanna look for something called animation speed. So we're gonna tap that in, and you'll see right there it says animator duration scale. So tap on that, and it will take you down to those settings, and you'll actually have three settings in here that you want to change. Animator duration scale, transition animation scale, and window animation scale. So go into each one of these and set it from point one one to point five X. And what this is going to do is double the speed of those animations. And I really like this because you still get those nice animations, but as you can see, they're a little bit quicker than the default one X speed. And this makes your phone a lot snappier, but also retains those nice animations. So definitely go ahead and set this up as well. All right, now let's move on to the next setting to change. What we're gonna do is go back into settings, go to display, and there's a few things in here we're gonna change, starting with, at the bottom, you'll see this option for smooth display. You definitely want to enable this because it's going to bump up your refresh rate from 60 hertz to 90 hertz, and that's going to make your screen feel a lot more fluid with that higher refresh rate, and it's going to be a much better experience. Then below that, we have the screen protector mode, and if you're somebody who uses um, a screen protector on your display, you definitely want to enable this because it's going to increase the touch sensitivity and allow your phone to feel those taps because when you have a screen protector, you have an extra film on your display and if you do really light taps, your phone might not register them and enabling the setting will help you with that because your phone is going to be a lot more sensitive to your touches. So if you're using a screen protector, definitely go ahead uh, and enable this. I'm not using one, so I'll just disable it. But next, what we wanna do is go to display size and text. And in here, what you can do is change your font size and your display size. So you can see if we move the slider up, it makes the text bigger and this is going to be system wide so it's going to apply to your icons to your settings and pretty much all across your phone and then you can also change the display size so you can make this bigger and that will make all the elements and everything on your phone bigger so if you're somebody who maybe doesn't have the best vision you can definitely play with this to make things a little bit easier to see but i'm going to leave it as default and then there's also another option in here to bold your text and that's just going to make everything a little bit more easy to read. So definitely go ahead and play with these settings until you got everything just right the way you like it. And then once you're done, what we're gonna do is go back into our display settings and we're gonna go down to colors. Now by default, this phone is set to adaptive and it might be hard to tell over video, but that is going to make the colors a little bit more punchy and a little bit more saturated. I like to set this at natural, but I would advise you to kind of just play around between adaptive and natural and set this up to your liking. All right, and the last thing we're gonna do under the display settings is we're gonna go into lock screen and there's a few more settings in here that you should change. So the first is you should go ahead and add some text to your lock screen. And what this will do is just leave a little message on your lock screen. So you can leave your email address or an alternative phone number. So what you can do is just uh, write your email in here. Um, and that way, anytime somebody finds your phone, hopefully they are nice enough to 
uh, reach out to you and return the phone to you. You can see your email will show up right there on your lock screen. So if anyone ever finds your phone, they will have a way to reach out to you and return the phone to you. And next under here, what you wanna do is go to now playing and enable this. And what this will do is identify songs playing nearby. So if you're ever driving in your car or maybe you're walking through a store or you just hear a song in the background that you really like but you don't know what that song is, your phone will listen to all the music that's playing around you and identify those songs. And then you can come back into these settings right here and go to now playing history and it will show you all of these songs that your phone identified and allow you to find out who the artist is and what the name of the song was to allow you to search for that song and add it to your playlist. So definitely a really, really useful feature. All right, guys, now moving on, the next thing we're gonna enable is the battery percentage up here. So you can see we just have the uh, icon of the battery, but not the actual percentage of how much battery we have. I really don't like that. I really like to see how much battery I have exactly. So what we're gonna do is go into settings, scroll down to battery, and then right here, you'll see the toggle for battery percentage. And now we can see exactly how much battery we have. We're at 50% right now. And I just think that that's a lot more useful than just seeing that uh, icon with the battery without the actual percentage. So definitely go ahead and enable that as well. Next, what we're gonna do is go back into our phone settings. We're gonna scroll down to security and privacy. And then in here, we're gonna go to device lock. We're gonna expand this and we're gonna tap on face and fingerprint unlock. And then it's gonna ask you for your pin. So just put in your pin. And in here, what you wanna do is tap on fingerprint unlock and add more fingerprints. So when you set up your phone for the very first time, it would have asked you to set up a fingerprint, but now what you can do is add more fingerprints. You can have up to five profiles, and I definitely suggest you use all five. And the pro tip for you guys, you should set up your main finger twice because the Pixel phones use a optical fingerprint scanner rather than the ultrasonic one that comes on the more expensive flagship phones like the S23 Ultra and the supersonic, or sorry, the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner is a lot better, a lot more accurate and a lot faster. The optical one isn't terrible, but it's just not as good. And adding your main finger twice will give your phone more data to work with and that will in turn have less errors when scanning your finger and be more reliable. So definitely go and add your main finger twice. And then what I do is I add my other thumb and both index fingers so that if my phone is ever laying down, I can just use my index finger on either hand. I don't need to pick my phone up to scan with my thumb or awkwardly try to place it while my phone is laying down. Or if I'm eating with this hand, I can always unlock it with the other other hand so you get five fingerprint profiles definitely go ahead and set them up it's definitely going to make your life a lot more convenient next what we're going to do is we're going to go back one and then we're going to go to face unlock now there's a feature in here that says skip lock screen and what this will do is as soon as your phone scans your face it will just unlock and open up the phone for you you don't need to swipe up after unlocking it so it's just one less interaction we need to take with our phone to get to using it. So definitely go ahead and enable this as well. Now for this next feature, even though everybody absolutely hates this behavior, for some reason, these phones always come with this default behavior. But when you long press the power button on your phone, it brings up your assistant instead of the power options menu. And if you don't really want the assistant and you just want the power options menu back so you can restart your phone or power it off, what you wanna do is go to your phone settings, scroll down to system, and then go to gesture. And then in here at the bottom, you'll see press and hold power button. Go into here and just select power menu. So by default, you can see it's set to digital assistant. We don't want that. We just want our nice good old power menu back. So now if I tap and hold on my power button, you can see we get our uh, power off, restart and lockdown options. So definitely, if you don't want that assistant, go ahead and change that. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is enable back tap, which is an awesome feature that comes on, on Google Pixel phones that will allow you to tap the back of your phone to take a certain action. So to set it up, you wanna to go to your phone settings. Again, go to system, go to gestures. And then right here, you can see it says quick tap to start action. So we're gonna go into here and this is disabled by default, but as you can see, what happens is when you enable it, you can now double tap the back of your phone to take any of these actions. So we can take a screenshot, we can bring up our digital assistant, play or pause media, see our recent apps, show notifications, toggle flashlight, or open a specific app. If you wanna do that, you can tap on here, tap on the cogwheel, and it will bring up all of the applications you have installed on your phone, and you can launch 
any of these applications with the quick tap. So it's definitely a really, really convenient feature that everybody should take advantage of. Now for this next setting, if you're somebody who doesn't really like swipe navigations and you miss those old school buttons that you had down here, you can actually bring those back and enable them again. So what you wanna do is go to settings. Again, we're gonna go to system and then we're gonna go to gestures. Uh, somewhere in here, you'll see uh, system navigation. So we're gonna tap into here. And you can see right now it's set to gesture navigation. But if you want those three buttons back, just tap onto here and you can see now we can go back, go home or bring up our recent apps just like that. So if you don't like swipe navigation, you miss those buttons. You can go ahead and enable this. Personally, I don't understand why people still like those buttons. It seems archaic. Gestures are definitely the way to go. So I'm going to leave that on. All right. Now moving on to this next setting, if you're anything like me and you don't like that audible sound your phone makes, when you lock the phone. I probably won't be able to show you through the microphone because it's not that loud, but if you have this phone in your hand and you lock it, you're, you'll actually hear a little audible sound. And also anytime you tap on any button, so if you're within settings and you start tapping stuff, you'll also hear a little sound. Now, personally, I don't like those sounds and I actually like to turn them off. So if you also don't wanna hear those sounds, what you can do is go to your phone settings and then we're gonna go to sound and vibration. And then if we scroll down, you'll see an option here for screen locking sound. So we're gonna disable that. So now when we lock our phone, it's not gonna make a sound. And also touch sound. So anytime we tap anywhere on our phone when we're navigating around our phone, we're not gonna get those sounds anymore. All right, now for this next feature, what we're gonna do is enable the number row on our keyboard. So you can see by default, the keyboard that we're using has our letters, but there's no number row at the top. And I don't like to keep having to you know, switch between the two of these. I just like to have it always accessible. And if you want to have that as well, what you wanna do is just click on the settings wheel right there. And then we're gonna go to preferences. And then right there, you'll see number row. So if we enable this, now when we go back into, uh, let's say Chrome, and we go to our keyboard, you can see right now we have those numbers right there. So now we can have them immediately accessible to us without having to switch keyboard to the number layout. And it just makes using your keyboard and typing a lot quicker. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is change the grid on our phone. And what the grid is, is it decides how many icons you can have on your screen. So you can see I have four icons this way, and I believe I can fit four or five this way, but we can actually change the grid and allow more icons to fit on our screen. So what we can do is tap and hold on our home screen. Then we can go to wallpaper and style scroll down to the bottom and you can see app grid. So yeah, it's set to four by five. So we can tap into here and we can change it from here. So you can see we can go four by four, three by three, but if you want to fit as much as possible on your screen, you can go five by five and you can see all the icons get smaller and there's a lot more screen real estate on our display and we can fit a lot more icons and widgets on our home screen. All right, guys, now the last thing we're gonna do on our phone is enable smart lock. And what smart lock will do is allow our phone to stay unlocked as long as certain criteria is met. So to show you how it works, what you wanna do is go into your phone settings, go to security and privacy, scroll down to more security settings, and then right here at the top, you'll see smart lock. Now we're gonna enter our pin, and then you'll see we have three options here. We have on-body detection, trusted places, and trusted devices. So on-body detection, I don't really use this one because it's not that reliable, and I don't always have my phone on me, so I kind of ignore this one. And then we also have trusted devices. I don't usually use this one either because I'm not always wearing uh, my smartwatch or earbuds, so my phone isn't always connected to a device via Bluetooth. So what I usually opt in for is trusted places. And you can go in here and then you can add a trusted place. So if you tap onto here, it will bring up a map and then you can search for your address in here and then select it. And what you will be able to do is set this location as the trusted place. And what's going to happen is your phone will just stay unlocked every time you're in that location. So if you set the address to your home, every time you arrive home, your phone will just stay unlocked. So instead of having to unlock your phone using your fingerprint or your face ID or your pin, your phone will just stay unlocked and you'll be able to just swipe up and access your phone. But there you go, guys. That's gonna do it for this video on the first things to do on your brand new Pixel 7a phone. Again, if you did get this phone, congratulations. And I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for future videos to come. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.